Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. And we have two battles for you today, and they couldn't be more different if I tried. Of course I did try, so yeah, I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> anyway, moving on swiftly. Uh, in this Tier 7 encounter battle, here on the Siegfried line map, we have Colin 999 in the SU 12244, premium Tier 7 Russian tank destroyer which is basically a T-44 with the turret removed and turned into the meanest fighting machine that Russia never built. Yes, this is another one of those designs that never actually made it into production. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure they built a prototype. There, there were blueprints, I know that much. But once again, the fact that nothing was actually built allows Wargaming Free License to cram as much bullshit as they possibly can into the SU-12244 that we see here in game being driven by Colin 999 because this thing is just ridiculous. This is a tier 7 tank destroyer that has tier 10 tank destroyer damage per minute. Almost 3000 damage per minute. And it's all to do, well fairly obviously since we're talking about the DPM, it's all to do with that 122mm gun. This is the pretty ubiquitous Russian 122mm heavy anti-tank gun that you get on the IS-2, that you get on the SU-152 and many many other machines. But what makes it special here, aside from, well as you can see Colin demonstrating the insane gun innovation, he's on a downward slope and he's still able to get that gun pointed at targets on the other side of the field. But that's not what makes this thing special, it's the absurd rate of fire. Now just for comparison's sake, remember this is a tier 7 tank destroyer, what other tier 7 vehicles get this 122mm gun? Oh, that would be the IS-2. On the SU-12244, while the accuracy is questionable, while still more accurate, and with a considerably faster aiming time, although not a fast aiming time, than the same gun on the IS-2, this machine gets a 7.5 round per minute rate of fire, and that's before you start adding equipment to it, where the IS-2 barely manages, in fact doesn't even manage to get 5 rounds per minute. This machine is ridiculous, and it's not just the gun, although it mostly is the gun, because it's basically a T-44, so it has medium tank mobility. And while the T-44 is never going to go down in the annals of history as one of the most heavily armoured medium tanks in the world, the frontal armour on the SU-12244 is better, and it's all because of that insane sloping. That's 100mm of armour sloped back at 60 degrees, which means that functionally, without any additional angling, that's 165mm of effective frontal armour, which makes the SU-12244 functionally immune from the front to any tier 5 tank in the game, immune to any tier 6 medium, and a fair old few of the tier 6 heavies and tank destroyers as well, and remember this is without any additional side-to-side -side angling, and if you do that, then you'd be quite happy to take the Pepsi challenge against any tier 7 in the game as well. I mean, this, this machine really does have it all. Dude, you want to get out of the way? Thank you. God damn it. Like I said, it's a slow aiming time. But it's faster than the aiming time on the IS-2 with the same gun. Now, you might be thinking, well, you should expect a tank destroyer with the same gun to have better gun performance than a heavy tank at the same tier with the same gun. And, well, yes, that's true. But you'd expect the heavy tank at the same tier, or the medium tank at the same tier, to have the benefit of extra armour or better mobility. And that just isn't the case. <laughs> This machine has it all, at least from the front. If you get flanked, you're in trouble. Well, are you though? Boom, ram kill. <laughs> 100 millimeters of frontal armor, very fast machine. Because, well, let's have a look. Let's see what happens when uh, Colin gets flanked. There's a Panzer IV on the hill there, he wants to kill. What side of it? Oh no, there's a KV-1 behind him. From the front, Unless he's firing high explosive ammo, he's functionally immune to any damage from any tier 5 in the game. 
Look at the quick work he's making of this KV-1. He's taking hits from the rear from the Panzer IV, but he can kill the KV-1 quickly enough and then get that frontal armor pointed at the Panzer IV, which is a tier 5 and cannot defeat his frontal armor, finish him off. I mean, this match is in this though. Already. We're barely five minutes in. And he's done nearly 3,000 damage. And he's missed a couple of shots as well, <laughs> right? <laughs> There's just the artillery left. <laughs> 3,000 damage per minute. Oh, there he is. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Got him. How many kills is that? Holy shit. <laughs> Eight kills and 3,000 damage in five minutes. <laughs> and um, R Russia actually preferred the SU-100M over this. And you can say what you like about Russian tank designers, but they're not stupid. So if they chose the SU-100M over the SU-12244 project, there must have been a pretty good reason for it. And I'm willing to bet that that pretty good reason was, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it was never going to perform like this in real life. Anyway, moving on to our second battle of the day. From a tier 7 encounter battle on the Siegfried line map to a tier 10 standard battle here on the Prokhorovka map. And instead of the SU-12244, a ridiculously overpowered tank destroyer, we have the Manticore British tier 10 light tank. A machine that nobody in their right mind would ever accuse of being ridiculously overpowered. The Manticore for us today is being driven by... Yeah, I'm never going to pronounce that. And I'm not going to call him Dave either, because he specifically asked me not to. He's actually from Romania. He said, call me Dimitri or something. So, okay, fine. Dimitri it is. Dave's Balkan cousin. So, um, what do you need to know about the Manticore? Well, the British light tank line, when it was introduced, was touted as being small, Fast, stealthy, and with battleship caliber guns. Now that's obvious bullshit, right? <laughs> Different kind of bullshit to the SU-12244, but bullshit nonetheless. I mean, the Manticore does have a good gun. This is the British 105mm. It's an amazing gun. But the rate of fire on this thing is painfully bad. The damage per minute is, not to put too fine a point on it, shit. The accuracy and gun handling is not good. It has an extremely limited ammunition loadout and yet with this terrible rate of fire you're still probably not going to get through all of the ammunition in a game. So when the Manticore was first introduced and uh, everybody had grinded out to tier 10 and took this thing into battle it was fairly universally disliked because it's just not very good at fighting. Something that you'd imagine would be fairly important for a tank. But what the Manticore is very good at, and what the enemy Manticore was not doing, is passive spotting. Because it is very small. It is very fast. Able to get to those good spotting positions quickly, and remain undetected when it's there, because it is also exceptionally sneaky. I mean, the enemy Manticore was trying to active scout in the middle of the field here on Prokhorovka, and there was certainly a time when small, fast, light tanks were the best choice for doing that and often excelled in that role but that time was before armored cars were introduced and while the manticore if driven well can do that it's extremely dangerous and it's just far better suited to this passive spotting the problem with passive spotting is that it's passive you're the one doing the spotting you're relying on your team to do the shooting and the killing and that can be a problem, because you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Team, would you maybe like to shoot at the tank that I'm spotting? No? You've got better things to shoot at? I have to say, to the team's credit, they're probably occupied with the tanks in the middle of the field. And while Dimitri's sitting here patiently spotting targets, these bushes are starting to take a lot of fire. I mean, the enemy team know he's here. That, or they know somebody's here, even if they can't see him. So they're taking some speculative fire and it's starting to get a bit warm up here. So Dimitri relocates. Oh, the TVP looks like he's in a lot of trouble. He just got spotted. Yeah, yeah, he did. He's going to try to make it into the low ground on the other side of the ridge and almost, but not quite makes it. 
I love it when people say, I almost did this. You almost avoided a crash, which is the same thing as saying you crashed. <laughs> yeah, saying you almost did something is just a, well, posh way of saying you didn't do it. <laughs> almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. So, this isn't a terrible spotting position either. I mean, he can see, although the tanks that he's spotting in the middle of the field are getting spotted as they crest the ridge line, so they're probably going to get spotted by his team anyway. Let's move back to the original position, where he has a much, much better view, because he's on higher ground, of the middle of the field. He's already on, if you've been paying attention, nearly 4,500 spotting damage, and has yet to fire a shot of his own. So, the team are shooting at the targets that he's spotting. They're not always hitting them, but they are at least shooting at them. And that's keeping the enemy team on the defensive. That's always the big problem when you're doing passive spotting in a light tank, or passive spotting in anything for that matter. It doesn't have to be a light tank, it's just that light tanks and armoured cars... Well, actually, no, light tanks tend to have better view range, so light tanks are better at it. Look at this. This is ballsy as all hell. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, trying to get your team to actually shoot at the targets that you spot. And the team have largely been shooting at the targets that he spotted, but it can very often be the case that you can light up tanks like that, or that, thank you team, as much as you like, but the team just refused to shoot at them. But you can help by communicating, which is something that Dimitri has been doing and the tanks behind him have been responding. You can mark a target and request fire. And sometimes, you know, the rest of the team, they're just, they're not looking where you're looking. And a little nudge in the right direction like that is often all that is needed to get the team to shoot at the targets that you want them to shoot at. Of course, sometimes it isn't. <laughs> You've just got a team of potatoes. Oh shit, he's been spotted. Time to move. Notice how he had already... Because he reversed into that position. So that if he did get spotted, he could get the hell out of there with the minimum of fuss. So he only took the one hit. One hit more than I'm sure he would have liked to take. And he's gone undetected again. So that T95 in the middle of the field is going to be a bit of a problem. Oh, he's knocked a tree over. He has been pretty careful about not doing that, because anybody the only team watching sees a tree fall over, they know there's a tank there. Right, let's get this bad boy killed. I mean, he's getting hit. Well, he's getting hit by the artillery when he's not cresting the ridge, and he's getting hit by everybody else when he does crest the ridge. But that guy does need to die. And in order to do that, he's going to have to respot him, because the team are trying to get him killed. The T-95, that is, not Dimitri. There he is. As long as that guy stays hauled down, it's only really artillery that can hit him. Or somebody on the flank here, like Dimitri. But Dimitri doesn't want to do that, because that will give his position away. And the rate of fire on this thing is so bad that if you are going to shoot, it had better be a killing shot. It'd better be something that you can kill in one hit. Because you probably won't survive sitting around waiting for the reload in order to get the second shot that will result in a kill. I think he's heading back up. Because he can probably spot that T-95 more effectively from up here. He's got the higher ground. Where is he? Let's see. Certainly safer spotting him from up here, assuming he has the view range. And, well, he gave it a shot, couldn't see it, so... Gonna have to put his man pants on. I mean, the T95 is getting spotted by the rest of the team anyway every time he crests that ridge. This is ballsy as all hell, but he is now on low enough health that he can do the job himself. That's the first shot he's fired this game. <laughs> Did not hang around to wait for the sixth sense skill to go off to tell him that he'd been spotted. Just assumed that he had and immediately went evasive. And sixth sense did not go off, so he got away with it. He did not get spotted. And now he's going ham. I mean, he, this is aggressive, but it's light tank aggressive. He is aggressively spotting. A bit of active spotting here, actually. Yeah, he did get spotted. Stick to the low ground. Come on, team. Do it. And the team are obliging. Look at the volume of fire going in there. 
All right, reacquiring targets for the team. They're clearly anxious to shoot things. There's the S tank. Oh, we could have stopped and finished him off, but nope, the team's got that covered. There's the artillery. There's the VZ-55. He is not spotted. Pumps a shot out, backs up. Look at this reload. I mean, it is truly terrible. Oh, that is awful. <laughs> I'm amazed the artillery survived long enough for him to get a second shot off. That's three shots fired in this entire game. He's only done 700 damage. But 13, nearly 14,000 spotting damage. And the only thing left alive on the team is the Batch Out 15558, the Tier 10 French artillery. They've only lost three tanks of their own. And there goes the Batchat 15558. That is game over. Some absolutely... Thank you, Akazuki. I was getting to that. <laughs> Cats. <laughs> Some absolutely textbook, passive and active, when he needed to, scouting there from Not Dave in the British Tier 10 light tank, the Manticore. That's an ace tanker and remember he only did 760 damage but it was the, well you can probably tell from the patrol duty medal that was 14,000 spotting damage which puts him comfortably ahead on experience earned despite the fact that the next highest scoring tank on the team did five times the damage he did and it was all down to that spotting and it has to be said a team who were actually capable of taking the hint and shooting at the targets that he was spotting, resulting in 14,184 spotting damage. And he only fired three shots, which meant that his ammunition resupply costs were negligible, and he actually made a 124,000 credit profit in a tier 10 battle. Admittedly, he, he did have a personal mission payout worth 65,000 credits in that particular battle, but even so, even if he hadn't been running a premium account, that would have still been a 30,000 credit profit. So that was uh, not Dave, that was, that was Dimitri, Romanian Dave, showing us how to manticore in this tier 10 battle here on Prokhorovka. And I hope you've enjoyed both of today's battles because that's it. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.